During his tenure on EastEnders, John had at times battled with bosses, demanding they stay true to the character that he loved. In 2019, he revealed that he quit the show for a period over plans to turn Nick gay. That was just one of the ill-advised, box-ticking, drama-light storylines that EastEnders have come to embrace in the age of woke, resulting in diehard fans abandoning the show in their droves. <laughs> in July, the soap registered its lower, lowest ever ratings when just 1.7 million people tuned in, a far cry from the 30 million who watched Dan Watts serve his wife Angie with divorce papers in 1986. So is John still an EastEnders fan, or does he, like many of its viewers, believe the once great show has lost its way? And more importantly, what's next for this TV veteran? Well, John Altman, it is great to have you in the studio today. Do you agree with me that EastEnders has just gone so woke these days, the storylines just are so... They're not fun anymore. Well, I haven't watched it for a long time. Maybe so that's saying something. I, 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 unfortunately, I couldn't really make any comment on it, so uh, uh, I don't know what the viewing rates are, I don't know viewing figures are, but... Um, well, down to yeah. 1.7 million. Oh, my gosh, I, I didn't know that. And they're sort of doing issues now. So you've got cosmetic surgery, addiction, cannabis oil treatments, on online trolling. But, but fans tend to say that these bland storylines come across as preachy. And that was the thing. EastEnders mm. was never preachy, was it? No, it would introduce things like... I remember somebody went missing one time. and that was just They mentioned on the programme that you could contact... Say, say your, your, your boy's run away, your daughter's run away, or whatever. Whoever's run away, you could... There's a network of... Uh, through all the priests, all the parishes of the UK whereby you can contact people on that network just to see if they spotted him or her. So, but they, 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 as you say, they introduced yeah. it. I mean, with, with Nick Conton's um, heroin addiction, I think that they, they were really good about that, but they didn't kind of preach about it. And it was, it was a lesson learned for, for young viewers when they saw the horrors that Nick went through when he was locked in the, in the bedroom in Dot's house with, with Pete Beale. And yeah, then he escaped and uh, he murdered Eddie Royal, the publican, uh, during, during his escape. And also, you know, the state that he was in. And they, they were really good for me, actually, because uh, they, 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 they got uh, a guy who managed to kick uh, the habit. And so I, I did lots of, in, in, like, talks with him and recorded it all. I'd actually known people in the past, and if you read my book, but, you know, I've, I've had a few adventures <laughs> along the way. Have. So, you know, <laughs> not far from here, actually, in Maida Vale. <laughs> but um, that, that's, that was a long time ago. And uh, so, yeah, I, 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 in fact, when I, was, I was in Delhi once in, in a hotel room. I used to watch this guy fix up, you know. You'd, you'd meet people along the way on the road. Yeah. They'd go from town to town out in the east, and, and they'd buy cheap heroin. And they never, never saw the, any of the sights. They were just, they were just, yeah. they, were, they, were, they were on holiday in their head, you know. So anyway, getting back to EastEnders, <laughs> yes, I, I know, I know, I haven't seen it recently, but they were very good at um, portraying all kinds of things, like, like the gay issue, for example, yeah. with, you know, uh, Michael Cashman, and et cetera. So. Well, I think the biggest indictment, actually, for, for the producers, the, the current producers, is the fact that they couldn't get June Brown to stay. And she blamed... The storylines, and I mean, I know this mm. is a woman in her 90s, but she has vigour, she has energy, she wanted to keep on acting. Yeah. You know her very well, of course, and to me, I'm like, they let Dot Cotton go? I know. What the hell? And I think a lot of people switched off as yeah. a result. Interesting. People say that to me, actually. Say, I don't watch it now that you're not in it, yeah. which, is, which is a compliment, but it's a shame for the show, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah June, I, mean, I, I wouldn't like to speak for June, but, yeah, she was not ple best pleased about some of the storylines or the way they were kind of writing her almost out. You know, she'd mm. be in a scene, but hardly say anything. But it's so, such a well-loved character, you know, and... Um, Yes, uh, she should have been a Dane as well, don't you agree? Absolutely. Well, she still could be. Yeah. She's, I, I oh, think she's yeah. one of the greatest soap well, wouldn't characters it be wonderful? Yeah. That, that, that we've when, had. When, when, when are the, uh, the damehoods or dameships coming out, whatever you call it? Are they need, coming out? to so, get a little so, message so, into the anybody prime out there, you know, June's in her 90s, it would be a, a lovely Absolutely. thing for her. No, 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 yeah. I think you're completely she's such a, right. She's such a good her. actress and she, she's wonderful to work with, yeah. Now, tell me, it, it did seem like there was this move towards woke when they wanted to make Nasty Nick gay. And, and what I really respect is that you actually stood up to the bosses and you said, no, 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 I know my character. It's not that you were opposed to playing a gay character, mm -hmm. just to be clear. Oh, it was have, nothing... I'm, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was not about that. It was about the fact, and I agree with this, it didn't make any sense for no. Nasty Nick to become no. gay. There was nothing in his history no. that, that pointed to that. Yeah, it, it was Nasty Nick and lovable Lofty... The pot, the pot man at the, at the, the, the Queen Vic, 
and Nick was always bullying Paul Lofty anyway. And Lofty, I think he probably hated Nick anyway. So, yeah, I mean, those two characters were poles apart, yet they were strong characters in, in their own right. And, as you say, ne neither of them were gay, so, so to suddenly make them gay, mm. it just... Uh, I went up to um, June. Um, I went up to uh, Julia Smith in the restaurant. You know things. You know what it's like in uh, if you're working in a theatre or in TV stations. Uh, Rumours start spreading around sometimes, and they, this got to me. I don't know how it got to me. So I went up to Julia just before it got went any further. I said, "Look, um, I have heard that you're going to make Nick and Lofty gay. You know, shack up together." Or something. I said, well, "I don't think it's right because they they weren't in the first place, and I don't think the viewers would appreciate it." And she said, "Well, I'll bear it in mind." But apparently, when, she, when I left the table. <laughs> she turns, turned to one of the script writers and said, write him out. No way! <laughs> <laughs> That's the brutality of television. Ju Ju Julia reminded me of Margaret Thatcher, actually. <laughs> Best man for the job, if you like. You know. <laughs> this, is why, this is why a lot of actors don't stand up to the woke bosses then, because they're worried about losing their contract. Well, it could be. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can't talk about now, aren't there? You know, yeah. uh, you, know it's, you have to be so careful. Well, I know, so it's like I walking on hot coals. No, 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 it and is. it's a shame, because it is. You know, people can't voice... Their, it's like, almost like the Taliban, isn't it? You, know, you, can't, you can't say... What, what you like. I saw in, on, on, on the news tonight that uh, the, 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 the women in Afghanistan, with their beautiful traditional dresses, mm. so colourful, and I think they're going to be allowed to wear them. No, they're all covered up. It's they're black all covered up now. now. It's absolutely mm. despicable. So sad. No, it is. But, but I think it's a shame. I think it's a shame what's happened to EastEnders because, to me, we sort of need EastEnders because it's the only show on, on TV that really reflects that East End life. You know, I, mm. I live in the mm. East End. It's incredibly important. But the thing is, mm. you know, EastEnders, they're not PC. They don't believe in wokery. You know, they're hard-working folk who go about their business and want to have fun and want to have a laugh and want to have a bit yeah. of drama. And that's why I think this soap is moving so far away from real life, and mm. that's the problem, because that's why EastEnders, I think, resonated, because it was so real. Exactly, yeah. As I say, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't watched it. I'll, I'll have to tune in and see what's yeah, going on. Yeah, you will, but no-one's watching now, it seems. <laughs> no-one's watching now. Yeah. Uh, so what's life like after leaving a soap like that where you're a household name, everyone knows how, who you are? Do you ever get to claw your identity back, or are you forever John Nasty Nick as you walk around the streets? Um, the yeah, pretty much. Well, it just depends where you are. But, yeah, I mean, people still... Uh, you know, like, first thing yesterday morning, I was doing some filming. I was, I was on the mainland still. I was in a, in, a, in a McDonald's or some car park, and this guy came up, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. Could we do a selfie? You know, I walked out my front door once, and there was a BT man digging up the, the pavement, you know, and he said, oh, hello, Nick, can we do a photograph? You know, it's like, I just got out of bed, but... I um, So are you haunted by it, or do you love it? Do you embrace I, it? I, I've learned to live with it, if you like, you know. And sometimes if somebody, sh somebody obnoxious shouts something out, I'll just, I'll just ignore it. But, but I don't mind, and I think it's, it's like if, you know, if you're... Um, no matter what you do it, it, uh, as an actor, if you're well-known from a TV series, I think you, you have to learn to live with it. You can't run away from it. Some people try to deny they've done soaps and things like that, but... So, and I can have a bit of fun with it as well sometimes, you know. Play it, like some woman comes up to me and goes, what's your, own, you know, mind your own bag, love, I might be tempted. And they laugh, do you know what I mean? Good chat up line. <laughs> Good chat up line. Uh, lastly, I was in the post office queue once, I've often told this story, and uh, a woman kept calling me Nick. And I, being the post office, I knew I was going to be in there a while. There was only one uh, counter open. There, 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 there's a gripe in my life. <laughs> yeah, and, and the banks too, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, she said, oh, this, that and the other Nick. Yeah, all right, Nick. How are you, oh, yeah, Nick? How's, how's your mom? I said, look, we're going to be here a while, I think. My name's John. She went, yeah, I know that, Nick. <laughs> she just wasn't having no, it. She, she wasn't having it. She was not no, accepting no, it. No, no, so, you know. But, yeah, but, but does it learn stop to live you with getting it. other acting roles if you become so connected to a particular character on a TV it does. show? It does. I, a casting director I know, a, a director, which, is, which is very cruel, actually, to, to have that attitude. Mm. So he didn't want any soap actors in this production he was putting together, which I think is awful, because I mean, some extraordinary performances... So just absolute uh, on, snobbery. On that's just uh, out-and-out snobbery. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it, it is. It, it, it exists. I think that's outrageous. It's like a sort of class structure where yeah. there's no soap actors, please, on. But you've got... You, in, in all the soaps, Emmerdale, Coronation Street, you name it, you know, um, EastEnders... Um, you've got brilliant the, act. The, yeah, I mean, and also people... Sw you, you, have to, you have to turn it on. It's not like you're in a play and gradually work your way in, into that scene where you crack up. You've got to get on that floor in front of all the lights and loads of dialogue sometimes. And, um, you know, I often watch it and I'm, I'm like... Even though I've worked on it, I have such great admiration 
people, you know, actors in all, all the soaps when, when, I, when I watch them, you know. But you yeah, do it's, have... It's, you, it's hard work, it's hard, it's not you, glamorous. But you do have another career and, and, and another identity. Indeed. Johnny Altman, th yes. this is a <laughs> music star, this is the new album, yeah. uh, Never Too Late to Rock and Roll, and, and I believe you had to change your name. I did, yeah, there's another John Altman, who's also uh, he's a good friend of mine. Is he? He, he? You know, he, um, he, he contributed to Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, he knew the Pythons, he worked on the Titanic soundtrack, so he's... Um, Pretty serious musician in a way. He's great fun. So I thought yeah, it'd be a problem uh, if there were two John Altmans in the so become Johnny. So, so, I, so I'm Johnny. Some people call me Johnny anyway. That's that's the original cover. There's another cover that's just been um, that's out. So that's out right now. Just been released. And, and the single um, is, is also out called Outrageous. And I think we've we've got to look at hallucinating me, which which Hall is hallucinating you, hallucinating you, which yeah, is yeah. one of the well, maybe I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> me, which is what, which yes. is one of one of the singles yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Hallucinating, hallucinating, hallucinating you, hallucinating, hallucinating, hallucinating you. Oh, who's that? Oh. Did you cast her, John? Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> friend of a friend. Now, she, she worked on it, yeah, as well. She helped out, too. But, but, but look, th this is absolutely... Charlie. This is actually, actually mad, though. Is it true that you were threatened by the country's most notorious prisoner, Charles Bronson? Yes. Because yes. he was threatened, for some reason, by your music career? Uh, I put out... Um, I think it was never too late to rock and... No, um... Looking for the Love of My Life, which is the second single, uh, I put that out the same week as he put his single out. So he said, uh, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't want you muscling in on the music business this week, mate. You know, you're going to be in big trouble. So he actually sent you a, he, a he, message? He sent me a phone message, yeah. Charles, the Charles Bronson yeah, the from Charles prison? Bronson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to send him a message back. I said to him, uh, well, you know, I, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to just scrap it all, Charles, but uh, the things I've been working on it for a very long time. But I'll tell you what, if it sells millions around the world, I'll donate to the charity that you're raising for your single. Yeah. So did that, did that get him off your back? Yeah, I've heard from him since, but I might, you never know, I might do. He's going to be out soon, I think. Yeah. <laughs> quite a character. I've always been quite a bit fascinated by him. So you need to keep, keep yeah, on the right yeah, side yeah, Charles yeah. Bronson. Uh, look, we've got lots of questions from mm. our brilliant viewers coming Have you? Uh, for you, oh, John. So, so let's get to them okay. now. Mm. George, via the GB News Twitter account, asks, are you really as nasty as your character on the tally? Often asked that. Um, I can be. I do have a kind of wild side to me. It's like a slightly Italian temperament. I was, I was quite a passionate person, and I hug people. Some people stiffen up a bit when you hug them, don't they? But, um, yeah, I, I, I can't stand sort of people that go around and put parking tickets on your car, uh, things like that. Um, or, you know, just... I don't know. There's some small-minded people in this world. People who rob people who've got hardly any money. You know, if you're going to rob someone, you know, rob a bank or, uh, <laughs> or, or you know, but maybe somebody's got that at all. billions. Yeah. You know. But I know your point. But, but yeah, yeah, I, 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 I hate um, um, bullying of any kind. So I can, I can get quite angry. angry. Also, politically speaking, as well, some of the um, injustice in this world. You know, such as well, there's the Yemen. I mean, it's what's happening in Afghanistan now. Palestine, I feel very strongly about that. Well, well a little horrendous. birdie tells me, John, that, that you might consider running for politics, that you might actually consider that there as, as a career. There was talk of that. There was talk of that. But, um, so where do you stand politically? Which party would you support? Well, you know, I'm not terribly enamoured with any of them. No. We have to start my own party like Nigel did. Not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. goodness, we need some fresh blood. British Freedom for Everyone party or something. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you, but you, do like, you do like the idea of it? You, you would consider moving into politics? Do you know, I could. I certainly, yeah, because I feel so strongly about a lot of things, you know, that, 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 that are going on. And, um, I mean, I wouldn't want to bore you with them all tonight, but uh, yeah, I'd love to try and make some changes in the world. Mm. That's why I speak What's out. What's the so first things. thing you would do? If you were in charge, um, I'd uh, sort out the benefit system. They make it so hard. Being out of work during the pandemic, mm. I tried to get my benef benefit from the, the council tax. And I was actually, the form they sent me was about 25 pages long. I filled it all in. I spent about an hour and a half on the, on the computer. And uh, then they sent me, then they sent me an another one back. With stuff on it that I didn't even know how to fill it in. So I gave up. Mm. I, I gave up in the end. And I'm sure there must be elderly people who mm. get, get very confused. Also, what's happening with the doctors' uh, things at the moment. Mm. Um, 
you know, I, I, you can no longer ring up a surgery and just make an appointment. I think that and is and there are people an dying because of that. Disgrace. I think it's disgusting. It really it's is an absolute yeah. disgrace. Yeah. We're now in a world where the NHS GPs don't think that they should have to see patients face to face as a Dan, direct right. I'm not sure if it's the GPs. It, or it's, it, the it's, the, it's the government. It. It, 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 it's the, these, these nimbies in, in Westminster making these rules and regulations mm -hmm. for, the, for, the, you know, for the NHS. You know, I mean, you go down the surgery, there's about two people sitting in there. If you can get an appointment, and sometimes mm -hmm. it takes days. Oh, look, I, I, I tried the, yeah. the, the, the other day. I couldn't even get a phone call no. on for eight days. And that was just a phone call oh, yeah, a phone. to then see if they wanted to book me in. I, I, I think it's a disgrace. I think for elderly people who yeah. can't access the yeah, internet, it's, it's particularly uh, difficult. Um, you mentioned during the pandemic and how tough it was, and I know a lot of entertainers just lost their entire oh. income. Every, everything just went because you, you couldn't work, could you? No. Nothing, nothing no. was allowed. No, no, no. No, there's, there's to a go video, on. Video messaging came 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 around, which was great, which was quite fun sometimes. Oh, like cameo! I love yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, when yeah. you sort of book yeah, a book a, a message little, from a celebrity. A, a, That's a, good. A few quid, and you send a message off to somebody, and uh, it can be quite funny sometimes. Like somebody. Uh, <clears throat> said it was their, their second wedding anniversary, which is a cotton wedding anniversary. So I set, put, sent a message saying, happy wedding anniversary, here is your cotton. You know, <laughs> <laughs> have a great time. Or, or somebody had a, um, uh, the, 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 they wanted to send a message, uh, he was best man at a wedding, and he wanted to make out that all these different boyfriends that the bride had had, you know, <laughs> were, were, th could send messages in, including me. So I, I sent one to that, 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 that request, which was like, how could you do this to me, Catherine? You know, after all the time, you told me you'd love me forever. All those holidays we spent together, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely broken-hearted. So he's going to play that at the... Um, <laughs> at, the, at the wedding reception, it'll be quite amusing. I love that, but, yeah, but no, yeah. I, I can imagine it must have been incredibly hard. Look, Victoria yeah. via GB Views on email asks, right. "What would you want to be in EastEnders today with the current storylines? Brilliantly played characters like yours seem from a different era." Oh, well, from the sounds of it, they need me. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I, I probably would if it was going to. You know, vamp it up and yeah. give it a bit of pff, bit of stick again. They need you yeah. back. They need yeah, you I mean, back. Uh, yeah. Hope they're watching. You know, when, when Wendy Richard always used to say, "Oh, we got a real villain back. Good to see you, John." Because <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing. I'm with Nick. He, he had no redeeming features whatsoever, did he? Really. And the thing is, if you stay in a soap too long, I mean, they put me. They wouldn't have put me behind the bar. Uh, or anything like that. He worked in a pizza parlour once. I think they didn't know what to do with him at that time. And a, a TV critic said, he looked like Quasimodo working in the local hairdressers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sadie, via the GB News Twitter account, asks, if your character in EastEnders did politics, so not you, not you, John, but if it, Nasty Nick. Nick did politics, which party do you Ooh. think I'd belong to? Well, he'd probably be in the, the equivalent of the... <laughs> Heavens above, yes, Nick, not me. Yes, the equivalent of the sort of National Front. Yeah, yeah very far right. BNP. Yeah, N yeah. I mean, he he would be, yeah, pretty abominable, really. Yeah. And Fran via GB Views, this is a good final final question. John asks, is it true that Morrissey was offered the role of Nick Cotton before you? I'd never heard Interesting this. Interesting one. No, I I think I heard. I think he might have gone up for it. Um. And you beat him. Um, well, yeah, and there was another, another there was a friend of mine up for it, uh, Gary Holton. He used to be now Vida Zane Pet and the Heavy Metal Kids. Yeah, he, he, he was up for it as well. But uh, there you go. I had a, a lucky audition that day, actually, because I got to go in twice. And not far from here, down in Shepherd's Bush Green. And so uh, Julia Smith wasn't there in the morning, said, Would you like to come back? And I talked like that all the way through, Dan. You know what I mean? All right, mate, all that. Yeah, and I made up an address in the East End. I got the A to Z out, I found an address in Oxton. Where, where I, I said that I lived, which I, I was from Berkshire originally. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Damn well. I, I, I lied my way through the audition and I had a double go at it, so that probably helped. Well, you did damn well, mm. and it is an absolute pleasure to have you on tonight's big question. That is John Altman, and there is the CD. Never too late to rock and roll. I presume you can download and all of that type of jazz. Oh, yes, it's on, uh, on Spotify. And all. Okay. That's it, it, the it, new way. Available everywhere. And there's a video coming out of Outrageous. So do check that out. And, of course, it, in the it, it, it's quite time, mad. It's quite bonkers. Yeah. The autobiography where you've got mm. all of those great stories. Oh, yeah. Altman, do come back. Love Keep to. Keep me posted. We've barely touched the surface if you've read the autobiography. <laughs> so. All right. Sure. Thank you so much. Bless John. you. Thank you.
Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.